welcome to the propagation class. I wanted to introduce you to a few people. Um, we have, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Jesse is a TikTok influencer. No, I'm just aware of now, I'll tell you, anybody that wants to see his TikTok, that we, we shared it at the board meeting and everybody was in stitches. It was really good. Sacramento so, Food Forest. Yes. I know, I don't grow food, so my name means nothing. Pardon? The dumbest name ever. <laughs> You, she's growing native plants because of you. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, happy. my God. There you so go. Cool. There you Yay. go. Excellent. I told you you were an influencer. It's, it's so exciting to see someone who's as excited about native plants. You know, I, he is so excited about native plants that he's infectious, and you have to watch him. So if you're on TikTok or Instagram, please look him up, Sacramento Food Forest. Yeah, Instagram. I get in trouble on TikTok. Oh, yeah. He's... <laughs> But he's really funny, very, very educational, and does a lot of rogue, rogue things with the native plants that I, I love. So if you have a rebellious side, you'll love him too. So anyway, we invited him to come here because we're here in Sacramento and thought what a great opportunity it was to start encouraging lots of young people into this, you know, into native plants. Because we're, we're all here, but where, where are all our kids that, that we can bring in and start getting them interested in native plants? So Jesse's... Jesse's going to be responsible for that. We're, we're holding you to, we're holding you to it. <laughs> and now I want to introduce you to our videographer for, to, for the day. Shall I? <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah, and I apologize, Chris. I biffed a little bit of the introduction capturing this. So not we'll not figure it out. <laughs> we're doing great things today. I'm excited to be here, and hopefully this video we can, um, you know, use this to spread this knowledge far and wide. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jesse. Thank yeah. you, CNPS. Yay! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for being here. I know, I know. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much, thank class. You. Thank you to all of you. And I want to introduce you to our speaker. This is Renee Murphy, who uh, 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 State CEP has searched far and wide to find us someone that was crazy enough to do, <laughs> 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 um, who is willing to do an online class for us. Because I thought in this day and age, online is the way to go. And then today is our in uh, in person workshop, and so. I, we're, we're just excited. Um, we have a, I'm going to remind you guys, because you've heard it before, but there is a shared drive, shared folder that has a lot of information on propagating, and we'll share it with you Perfect. also. You. Yeah. And, um, and then, um, so this will be on there also. So, cool. Take it away, Take it away Renee. Right. I guess it's not morning anymore, but good afternoon, everybody. It's so nice to see you all in person. I hope that you guys are taking the opportunity to get to know each other. I know we've kind of learned a little bit about each other over the three different courses we took with each other, but this is my passion, being here and talking to you guys and um, learning together as a community um, and spreading the love for native plants. So thank you so much for bearing this terrible weather and getting out here but you know we need the rain so and if you're going to be a gardener you got to be able to deal with the weather so if there's one thing that you can do for me before you leave today right around the corner there in front of these cars is a butterfly and I put a chalkboard there because it's so important that we as a community that we actually have a call to action and we talked a little bit about this on our last class why are you here or is there something you've been inspired to do whether it's something as little as harassing our native plant nurse or our, our local nurseries to start caring natives or do you want to go out and teach a class in elementary school and teach kids about native plants or do you want to start your own nursery or do you want to help grow for the cmps chapter in sac, sac valley who need growers so bad Whatever that is that you want to do, I, I hope that you grab one of the pieces of chalk and write on my chalkboard um, what that call to action is so that ultimately we have a, a record that I'm going to hold you to it. No. <laughs> but I'd love to see what everybody's ideas are and what you're inspired to do, and that's what inspires me all the time to come here and do these classes. Um, so if you could do that, and if you are on social media, I'd love it if you ta tag me too, and that's at Midlife Farm Girl. Um, 
So yay, let's get started. Um, does everybody have the supplies that we needed? Everyone should have a tray, your little greenhouse, and again, you're welcome to take those home. Um, I do have a lot of supplies around for you to look at and such, but please, if there's something that you'd like to take a little sampling home, I'm open to a lot of it, but please let me know because this is all like my, my personal stock that I've collected, so um, make sure that I get my cutters back and um, that kind of thing. Um, there are a couple of things that I would like you to do. We talked about the rooting hormone. Um, I actually bought like three different grades of rooting hormone just because I'm going to start testing them all. But I do have on this table with all the seeds, I do have a couple of bottles of rooting hormone. And there are little, some shot glasses there. So if you could, as a table, um, fill a shot glass up with some of the rooting powder. And remember, you're never going to want to um, dip into a container of rooting powder. If you buy this at home, you're always going to be pouring some out and dipping into that so that you keep this clean and sterile. So um, as a table, you are going to want to get um, some of the hormone for your table when we do some cuttings. Um, and then I did assign homework. So um, I did have uh, the first day group. Where are my first day people? OK, so you guys look around and see each other. So do you guys want to stand up and, and do a little quick chat about what you found out? Where are my uh, second group people? OK, so you guys see each other. Stand up and go chat with each other. And where's my group C people? OK, see each other, so circle up. And then you're going to do a quick little presentation. Uh, the hands-on stuff. Yeah. That's what I'm really excited about because, um, I mean, I think it's really good for them to be sharing their experiences and all. But you know, once they actually start understanding how to take a, a cutting, how to be more successful at it, you know, it's helpful. It feels good to be successful. It does. Yeah. It does. And you have to learn from anything that goes wrong. You know, don't give up. It's, it's time to learn new, try something different yeah there's a lot of people here that know a lot of things so yeah. come and grow so how's everybody doing on your homework are we ready to profess what we learned all right so you guys go ahead and teach the class what you learned oh, okay. <laughs> and that's what it looks like well how, how old are these I uh, just just got them recently. Oh, cool. Okay, because that's one of the first things I read is that they have to be really fresh. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty true for most natives, right? It, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. So, and, and you're welcome to, like, if you want to pass them around so everyone could see what those look like. Yeah. But, so it's not your production ones, right? It's, it, I know. It's, it looks very different <laughs> once you open those up, right? Which is not easy. No, no. Okay, so tell us what you learned. How do you get into those suckers? So, They said any scarification, that okay. it was just the husk that's removed, and then you do a viability test to. Um, just hold it. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's just the camera will pick okay. you up. Okay. Um, then you do a viability test with water to see if they sink or float, get rid of the ones that float. Can everybody hear? No. Okay. Oh, yell. Okay, here. Hold this. <laughs> This will be better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, so you do a viability test uh, to make sure that they're viable. Anything that floats, you get rid of. Take the outer husk off, put them in a soil and perlite mix, bag them up, and stratify them by putting them in your refrigerator for three months. One of the sources that I found said actually up to two years. Mm -hmm. um, so you can have them in there for quite a while. And then uh, the one of the sources I found said that if you plant it in the fall directly in the soil, uh, one entity found a 98% success rate, but when he planted them in a container and then planted them out after that, he had a 98% failure rate. So um, I think the takeaway there is that you have to make sure that the tap root isn't uh, disturbed. So anything to add? That's pretty much it. I, I didn't. I did not see the article. She saw the one that I read said. To the microphone. Oh, oh this is. Yeah, well, it, it goes to the video. So it just cute. goes to the video. So. <laughs> it looks like 
a shaving brush. The video will pick you. Okay. So, um, I also found that I, I didn't hear about the planting them right in the ground, but they, it said, you know, you put them in the perlite or whatever your mixture is in the fridge, poke the seeds in, and then once the sprouts come up, then you put them in. It was equal parts um, potting soil, perlite, and sand. And then you put them that that the the um, if your temperature is below 65 or 65 or below, you should use a seed mat to help them sprout and, and grow um, in your in the little containers. And then, um, uh, but but it was three to four months again in the fridge. And then you could plant them outside on a south, I mean, put the pots outside on a south wall or in some kind of greenhouse or structure where they, they get the sun and, and they have to have afternoon shade, at least up here. So, and question, did any of you guys uh, look into where these trees are, are found? Or Along what streams? Endemic, northern, southern, southern California, where are they from? Southern. Uh, southern. Southern, southern, southern California, California southern. between. Uh, San Diego and Santa Barbara. Okay, so I'll tell you my experience has been um, it was very difficult to find a nursery who's growing these. Obviously, they're kind of a pain, yeah. right? <laughs> but they're very rare and they're very sought after. We would get calls all the time for them. So if you like uh, a, a plant that's difficult to grow, <laughs> get really good at growing that one, right? I was raised in Lake County, which is in Northern California, and we had them growing by the creek. Mm, okay. Uh, 40 acres of English walnuts, and then we had the wild walnuts also. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's my understanding there's a northern California black walnut. Okay. What's the and this is why we always want to refer to botanical names. So this is Juglans californica, but this is why that's really important because that northern California might be slightly different. Um, so. So if you can to in your research, make sure that you're comparing that botanical name because that's really going to help key you in to whether is that still truly that species yeah. um, or is it? I think it is, but I can't. Yeah. Well, Calscape, Calscape just shows Juglans Californica, yeah. and it shows southern <laughs> and then not much in the middle. And then, so and then, then, so then it's, up north. So then it is probably one species. So. Um, so yeah, I just wanted you guys, all to, I specifically chose that one because number one, I, knew, I wanted more information on it, but, <laughs> and like I said, you know, I would, I would love it, um, but it's very difficult to know how to do every single species, but here's my question, when you guys did the research, did you know what everything meant? <laughs> when you said when they said words like stratify, yeah, well, yeah, because of you. Okay, so that that's that's all I'm trying to get across is I wanted to teach you guys all the language of what everything meant, and then you could go out and do your own research because I could never be your Google search for every species. But what I can do is teach you the different steps of what everything means so that you guys are dangerous on your own, right? So well, that's kind we, of what we did about. find though is some uh, contradiction. Yes, lots of contradiction because you guys, there's no one way to do everything. There's no one way to skin a cat. Um, and just because some, you know, they say collect this, collect the cuttings at this time, doesn't mean it won't work a little bit later. You just may not have the same success rate. I mean, I tell you guys, I plant all summer long when you're not supposed to be planting in the heat. I do it all the time and I'm 95% I'm successful. So. It, these are guidelines, but be the scientist and do the test. And that's how you know, and that's why it's so important that you're keeping that notebook. Because that, if you don't remember what test you took or what you were testing for and the, the time of year and what you did, then you know what was the point of doing the test? So just yeah, try and write things down. Yeah. So I just looked it up. The Northern California black walnut is juggling Hindi's. Hindi-E. Okay, so Hindi it's different. And then the Southern hmm. Is that Calscape? Yeah, uh, Cal, yeah, Cal Flora. Cal Flora. Oh, Cal Flora. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, these these sites aren't the rule. They they really yeah. aren't. I worked at a nursery. I found mistakes all the time. So, yeah. Yeah. Did you have to open them up, or do you have to open them up to plant them, or you just plant them just like that? Oh no, you have to husk them. Okay. You have so to husk. Apparently, the husks are pretty tough. 
and you have to take a knife or some kind of sharp implement and cut around them and take the husk off and then the seed is inside. So did you guys find, uh, are animals eating that seed? Is there anything, or yes. are they digesting? Well, you will. Portions? You, how, you, how need to, you need to protect it. Once it goes, it, you instead of uh, stratifying it, you can plant it directly. You can plant it directly into the soil if you do it in fall. Okay. Um, but if you do that, you need to have it in a basket underneath and a basket on top, or it will get eaten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I found that when I was picking this up off the ground, the um, the skin around the top was just falling off at that point, and, and so there's clearly some sort of method that needs to strip that outer coating, which is pretty typical of these, you know, bigger seed types. So just make sure you're paying attention to that and reading how to get into it. And you know, that's all a part about how we talked about how seeds need to get distributed, and sometimes they're distributed because they're getting eaten by an animal. So anything that's getting eaten by an animal is going to be a pain to propagate because you've got to clean the seed, right, and get that outer coating off like their stomach would. So um, yeah, so please go ahead and pass those around and you guys are welcome to take, um, I'm not sure how many there are in there, maybe just take one and if you want an extra, um, make sure everyone's got one first. Um, thank you, thank you everybody. Okay, group two. Okay, so um, I actually consulted uh, three different sites and um, the two that I, well, I found a lot of contradictory information <laughs> about milkweed. It seems as though uh, milkweed um, grows really well in disturbed sites, you know, like on the sides of the roads and things like that. Although not so much nowadays because, you know, there's a lot of spraying that's done. And up where I live in Placerville, you see a lot of roadsides around, you know, small farms and things that say no spray or around the orchards and things like that. But um, Supposedly, milkweed is a pretty easy plant to grow from seeds, from rhizomes, and um, from cuttings. Um, I think um, one of the, the, the sources of information that was the most fun and probably the most extensive, if you really want to get into milkweed, was the xerxes.org um, uh, okay. site. And um, I want to share kind of a fun fact about collecting seeds um, from wilt meat, you know, which form in the pods. And um, they showed pictures <laughs> of pods with milkweed seeds and all the fluff just flying everywhere. And then trying to separate the seeds from the fluff is, is really, really difficult. So the key to gathering seeds from the wild is to collect the pods before they open, but when they're just ready to open because apparently when they're ready, they kind of split. And what you want to do is reach into the pod and grab the seeds and the fluff. <laughs> exactly what I'm talking about. You don't want to gather it, you know, when it's already open. But when the pod is just barely open, you can reach in and you can grab the whole mass of fluff. And then all the seeds are at one end and then you can pick them off really easily. There's another method the uh, paper bag thing. Oh, another method, paper bag thing, you cut a, a little uh, uh, hole in and then you take the fluff and the seeds all together and go like that and let them go down. But I didn't do that. I took okay. the hard way. <laughs> um, would somebody else like to share a, a portion of their knowledge? Um, that's, I read the same thing about using a bag but it was really just to put the bag around the seed pod so that when it did burst that you wouldn't lose everything. So while it's on the plant, you could also put a bag. But I have not tried that. So I just wanted to show you this. It, all you need is something like this. Oh, I got um, one of my lapels. I'm good. Oh, okay. um, I use this for small or you can use bigger bags, but these mesh gift bags are great. You just put them over the flower bud and shut it. You're gonna need a bigger one for milkweed. But this is a great way to be a lazy seed collector because then you don't have to wait for the perfect time. You'll actually see the seeds fall down to the bottom when it's ready. Yeah. And um, you don't need any, you don't, you don't need to treat the seeds. You, it said no treatment in the Dara Emery book and in Calscape, so. It was contradictory. Yeah, I would say that's contradictory because uh, my experience in the nursery was we got uh, had better germination rate when somebody forgot to put the seeds away. 
and the rain came and a bunch of them fell into a wet floor like this and that was the best germination rate we'd ever had. <laughs> um, the, the, uh, the way I was introduced a long time ago when I volunteered for just a day here was to, um, they, they just soaked them for 24 hours. That's what I did with my own personal the, supply. They the didn't put them in, yeah, no, they didn't put them in, in the refrigerator or anything like yeah. that. And uh, uh, mine, I took some home and they came up just fine. I'm sure theirs did too, so. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you guys. Um, which specific species did you look up? Narrow leaves. Yeah, I collected speciosa. Uh, I think everybody will be happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so where is... So I wanted to pass around these for you guys to be able to take some home. I, I made a, a, a really bad mistake and gave them narrow leaf, um, but this is actually showy. So you might just want to do a quick read on this one. A lot of it's going to be, I'm sure, very similar. But you're welcome to use one of these little bags and take some seeds to take home. Just make sure you write on the bag what it is. But it's, it's uh, at the top here. OK, Group C, where are you? Group C. And then after this, we're going to take uh, a quick walk before the rain starts. We are going to get rain towards the end, so we're going to take a little walk before we come back here. So if you guys just pass this around, it, it's not a microphone. It's just the camera will pick you up in the video. We can hear what you're saying, but like, speak loud. Okay. Susan. All right. Okay, Susan, what plant did you have? We had the California Buckeye Esculet. Elias uh, Californica. Um, so we uh, obviously we had different information, um, and I think it was all beneficial. Um, one person recommend it was recommended that you use gloves because the parts of the buckeye are poisonous. Um, that's not my personal. I don't use gloves, but just me. Oh, barely. Okay. Um, and that. In nature, the uh, buckeye just drops to the ground and propagates itself. Um, uh, but um, some of the research showed that if you put it in a, either in the ground or in a pot with um, soil on top of it, it has a better success rate. One person who was sowing them directly in the ground and wanted lots of them would plant three in an area to make sure they had it um, had at least one. Um, what else did we find? Um, the oh, origins were the origin, um, they're mostly in the, let's see, I got today's Coastal report. range and Sierra Foothills. Yeah, coastal range and Sierra Foothills, although they, um, They do go um, as north as Redding and as south as Long Beach, but not in Central Valley. Um, the annual precipitation is 5.8 inches to 109.8 inches, and an elevation of four feet to 10,807 feet. Um, they like dry slopes, canyons, or stream banks most often in the coast range in Sierra Foothill, as you mentioned. Yep. Um, anything else? Uh, they grow in full sun or deep shade. I've seen them in both places. They're very adaptable and they are summer deciduous. So they drop their leaves in the summer to save on water. So they can do uh, very little water in the summer or they can um, take on more whatever you give them. Uh, Teresa, could you step up front and model how amazing your your apron oh, wow. is here? Yeah. Like, don't I'm so badly wanting that in my life. <laughs> uh, it's perfect for these little snips and stay sharp. So yeah, that's awesome. I, I love this. This is a great way to keep your tools from uh, being rested on the ground and keep them in the apron, keep them clean. Yeah, where'd you get it? Um, it's actually from work. <laughs> oh. Anything else, guys? All right, cool. So we passed around the Buckeye if you want to take some, and I also saw someone else bought a big bucket of those, which was... Oh, I did. 
Yeah. <laughs> amazing. No, the yeah, buckeye so has a husk on it, right? Have, so two two sources in Ohio buckeye shows up all the time, but mm -hmm. but the reason so there's a little white spot on the the front or mm -hmm. on the top, and I was never sure that is the part that goes up. Or does it matter? I don't think it matters. I, I think you'll read that there's one particular way to do it, but honestly, it just, seeds figure it out. They go because nature little, doesn't yes, drop yeah. them one way yeah. or another. And um, then the other the other source talked it. So it comes in this leathery pod. Uh, outside, there's a leather yes. shell. We peel so them cool. off. Yeah. They they but but one of the sites said that that was why it's called because it looks like the eye of a buckeye. If you look, the little seed shows yeah. up, and then the pod shows up uh, oversight of it anyway. Yeah, but so I always cool. thought it was a little white spot on the Buckeye. So yeah. this is the seed. That's, yes. That's, that's had, yeah. off. had the cover taken the off. Yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah, there's a capsule and around it and you can pick them as soon or yeah, pick them up as soon as they drop. Let them dry uh, for a couple days until the um, outer capsule splits. You can take it off. Um, and yeah, the brown shiny seed is what you want to plant. All right, cool. Yep. Thank so you. you. Plant, just plant that straight into the pot. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a little go. bit of, of uh, soil, Chuck and it's you want a deep pot because Chuck it will. The roots are very long, you know, very deep. So I made a mistake of putting mine in a one-gallon pot. It's not quite a year old, and the roots are totally coming out the bottom, mm -hmm. and it's probably about this tall. So. So this is, you guys, if you're planting a tree species, it's, uh, it's more ideal to use something like this. Mm -hmm. And um, this is why you should make friends with people at the nursery, because you'd be surprised at how much of this type of stuff they stockpile in the back and do nothing with. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are going to a nursery consistently and giving them business, I would be like, hey, do you guys have any plastic pots around here that you're just stacking up and not using them? Um, I used to get from the Walter Anderson's chain in the San Diego region. They'd let me have anything that I wanted. <laughs> so um, just keep that in mind. But these are more ideal if you're wanting to plant trees because they're going to be able to go down with the roots. How long um, they um, I mean, not long. When when you start seeing roots come out of the bottom, you got to start making decisions. And then you should put you should up from that, right? And up I would put it into the ground, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Was it very rooted? Probably. Probably. That, you know, I mean, I would use the, the chopstick and kind of push gently, squeeze, make sure the soil is moist. But, yeah, it's probably too rooted if it's that hard, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah. I had a question. I had read it took like three weeks for it to germinate, uh, the buckeye, somewhere around there. I don't know if you guys What did you guys read about germination time? Okay, it took about three weeks. Oh, no, longer than that. Oh, longer? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, what I've read with, I mean, with like uh, um, oak trees, I mean, it could be really quick, and that's why I keep them in, for me, I keep them um, in a paper towel in the fridge for an extended period of time and just pull out the ones that germinate and just keep the ones that don't germinate in the fridge, so. Is it wet paper towel? Wet paper towel, yeah. So now I wanna take this time to take a quick walk around the grounds. Um, bring your pruning shears. This is the nursery. We, we don't call this uh, uh, too much. We call this the wash pile. <laughs> So um, we're getting a new solarizer, so everything is going to be solarized. We're, we're really trying to get away from just buying more plastic. So um, if you want to help with the effort, we're here every Monday and Wednesday from 10 to 12. So that is the biggest um, uh, toy on or Christmas berry bush that I've ever seen. And it's because this is the best draining soil. This is, uh, it gets a little bit of water and it's really, really good draining. It's funny, the leaves, it's funny, the leaves on Toyans have a great variability they in do. terms of size. Yes. You know? Yeah. 
Um, and then of course, this is buckeye. our buckeye, our buckeye. So, um, and so people uh, uh, talk about the buckeye. One of the things that I wanna point out is that they're very important for butterflies. Um, they're a very important nectar source. So we should not overlook that. Is it a keystone, do you know? I don't know that it's a keystone, but it's one of our keystones. Um, did, um, because of timing, do you want to? So I want them to take, while you're here, guys, please take a cutting of the toy on. Okay. And what you want to do. While you're here, guys, please take a cutting of the toy on. Okay. And what you want to do is take a piece that's about four to five inches long and don't take a piece that has berries on it. And we talked about that. Why are we not going to do that? Because you want all the resources to go to the roots. That's right. So if we're taking something that has bloomed with berries or a flower, where's that energy on that flower? We want it to get, we want it to put its energy so into roots. this is going to be a hard cutting? Is that what you know, I, I, This is more of like a semi-hard. Now, here's the thing. Um, I, what I've read is ideal, and these are very easy to grow from seed. So I would grab a couple of these berries while you're here, take a oh, handful. We'll, we'll, we'll get some over in the yeah, hedge We've row. got a better tree with a lot more berries. Yeah. However, we intentionally didn't prune this back to give you guys uh, stuff to cut from. And ideally, I want you guys to be able to practice. So even though the ideal time to take a cutting of this plant is the spring, I still want you to practice because, you know, we're gonna cut the leaves off, we're gonna take a certain uh, size piece and then we're going to practice putting rooting hormone on it and that kind of thing. So don't be sad if it doesn't root and hey if it miraculously roots, fantastic. But I still want you to practice, right? If you take berries or I mean if you're in, if you're in that like when when there are cuttings in the nursery and it starts to bloom flowers we cut the wire them off, on top of the but I mean, well, ideally, you know, you're just going to have a better success rate if you like, don't. It looks like yeah. fencing. Yeah, it so go ahead and take and your you cutting. Uh, you you can take more than one. You can take multiple. I mean, um, oh, if they oh, root oh, on you, great. If they the, don't, um, don't be sad. Oh, God. Um, Would it be better? Uh, farm supply. The, um, new growth? Like uh, it's, yeah, it's so you you want to look for new growth, ideally, guys. And then you just put PVC. Yes, because it's very sharp edges. Okay. So it's that really is hog. I'm calling it big fencing, but it's hog fencing. It's hog fencing, yeah. Uh-huh. Do you usually propagate uh, the toy off or the seed here? Or do you don't worry, it only takes two to three months for these to root, so. When do you not that long. Now? Now? Yeah. And then some of the previous read about I, uh, that seems to be I fostered 40 I, of these plants. Oh my goodness. 38 survived to yeah. the fall. That's yep. Really good. You, you don't want anything to get stressed. Like we're not doing it the right way then right now. Huh? We're not well, we really don't have that right ability. Away. I don't know. Yeah. I'm don't asking the anymore. experts. Uh, so yeah. if when we were at the nursery and we'd be taking cuttings, we would absolutely take a bucket take cut or take stems and put it in the bucket and carry that over to the propagation oh table God. so best practices yeah that would be your best make or best break, practice huh? yeah yeah okay good but since so, we're going i mean this has been watered so heavily by the rain and then we're going to go back in a few minutes we should be okay sorry. just yeah <laughs> and this is this is elderberry here nope no buckeye, buckeye. Buckeye. They all look like elderberry to me. Yeah, right. Like, no, 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 no. No, elderberry's elderberry down there. Is, yeah. Elderberry's yeah. there. Yeah. That looks exactly, yeah. No, no, that's an elderberry. Those are straight. Elderberry, that's elderberry, that's, that's where I saw it. Yes. <laughs> so as as a buckeye starts to uh, get older, the, um, the skin uh, starts to get whiter and whiter. Yeah. Um, it's really striking when, when you see it in the wild where it's... Um, yeah, where, where they get really old. Yeah. And, and the buck, uh, the uh, elderberry does not do that. So that one there in that garden, we're trying to keep it trimmed up so that it's more presentable for a front yard. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so where to next? Well, let's see. Uh, we're going to go over to the butterfly way station. So we're not going to... Uh, I sent everybody that's on the tour today a um, um, the demo garden information. So each of these gardens has an information sheet on it. So this is the butterfly way station. 
So it tells a little bit about the intent of the garden and why we have such a thing. And then it has a list of the plants. On the butterfly way station one, whoa, hello. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, it uh, it tells you what the host plants are for, or um, what the butterflies are. It's it's you have to have the host plant and the butterfly, and so that's what this is here. Um, so if you look at that information, it's a lot of pages. So I did not print any any of it out, but you have it all. Um, I have it on my phone. <laughs> um, but of course we've got the, uh, it started with a monarch uh, way station uh, because of course monarchs are in such uh, bad trouble right now. Um, so you have the milkweed for, um, uh, for, for them, to, for the larva to be able to eat um, the leaves. And you, we have here um, coyote mint, which is the primary, one of the primary um, uh, butterfly plants, butterflies. The nectar, you mean? Yes, the nectar. They they need the nectar, so the butterflies need the nectar, and um, and then you need the water sources. It's all. This is why it's a butterfly way station because it has everything that that the butterflies need, no matter what their their stage is. Where's the where's the mud puddle? The mud puddle is, oh God, oh, you can't even see it anymore. Oh, there it is. So there's a little um, water there. And of course the birds take advantage of the little water, but it overflows and it creates a little bit of a muddy oh, yeah. area right there. And that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to simulate um, um, like a river bank. And um, because that's where butterflies are gonna get their moisture is uh, from uptaking from like a, a sand, um, a sandy area like that. From class, we talked about the juncus, about dividing it. So this is what it looks like here. Um, do you guys remember if it's a monocot or a dicot? Monocot. Monocot. That's right. They're so good. Is coyote bush the same as mandarella? No, coyote bush is oh, no, uh, coyote, coyote mint. Coyote mint. Yeah. Coyote mint is monardella. Yeah. Yeah. Monardella velosa. Okay, because there's other kinds of mints that I... Yeah. There's a thousand kinds of mints, yeah. but no. So, yeah, so, um, but the complete list is there. And, um, well, you guys probably know this, but the, um, a, a lot of the things, uh, Cowscape is going to have a good place to start as far as propagation. And, um, and then uh, we, we used um, the Dara Emery uh, propagation by seed. And I always think of it as standing on the shoulders of, you know, of the past. It's not going to be the answer, but it's a place to start. <laughs> and you can go from there. And you can do all your tests to make sure that you're, for, for your climate, your whatever, you're, you're doing the best you can to, to grow the plants. Um, should we go out to the hedgerow? Okay. We are going to go hike over this way. Uh, we're going to go this way. I lied. <laughs> Someone dropped their cutting. Go this way. point things out. Oh, yeah. That's Indian paintbrush. Yeah. It's a saprophyte and so um, it needs the roots of another plant and in this area the Indian paintbrush uses the sticky monkey flower. Oh. On the coast or up in the, um, the Sierras there there are lots of different varieties uh, or a lot, a lot of different species of, of um, uh, the Indian paintbrush. And uh, each of them has a different host plant. Chris, I just wanted to talk about this really quick. Here's your yarrow. Uh, yes. Your Achillea. And this is a great plant that you can easily take the offsets from. So if you, you really want to go in and take a look at plants and see how they're growing. And if you can see there's, 
you know, when you go to a buckwheat, you pick it all up and it seems to be coming from one central source. But if you look at this one, you can see it, it has spread all around. Um, so you could go in with a shovel and there's a great place in the parking lot that we can practice. This. Yes. But you can take a shovel and just go right down in there and pull up that baby plant and just move it. And again, I know this is the ideal time to do it, but I do it in the middle of the summer and it has worked yeah. out fine. So, so again, this is, it, it does like a lot of water, but it's a really great starter plant for propagation. Um, and, and then remember, if you want those different colors, cause it just comes in white, <laughs> nature only gave us white. So if you want the colors, you do have to do it this way. Don't, you can't do it from seed, right? So you're gonna need to, to take your cuttings. And then what causes the different colors? So the, I don't, don't know how those particular ones were created because um, there's so many different ways. Okay, sometimes it's just a random variation in nature that someone saw and captured it and said, mm -hmm. I'm gonna make more of that, mm -hmm. like a, a pink lemonade. Mm -hmm. So someone actually had a freak of nature, which was the pink mm -hmm. lemon. Mm -hmm. And so you can only do that by grafting. So. Yeah. Um, similar situation, but there are ways, and, and like um, petunias are one of the ways, they actually go in and treat them with different rays in labs and are able to force the plant to kind of mutate, mutate that's the word. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's man-made and then sometimes it's a, nature, a freak of nature that someone has seen and then mm -hmm. able to bring that to market. I read that if you get the one that's been mutated or hybridize, whatever it is, um, that if it's altering the flower color, that it can actually be detrimental to the wildlife that you're trying to feed. Well, and, and yeah. isn't there always that issue? Yeah. That I, I'd say that's always that issue. So just don't buy from Home Depot and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> buy from your native grocery. While everybody's here, let's, let's point out the, uh, this is coyote brush. Okay, this is the female coyote brush. Right behind it is the male coyote brush. It's two different flowers. So um, if you buy from um, um, uh, cornflower farms when they are doing their propagating, they do it all from the, the male because a lot of people don't like the fluff um, <laughs> uh, actually, the females are more attractive to butterflies. They're, they, well, and they're sometimes more, more attractive, period. But <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, famously, one of our, uh, our interns, one time I was showing them, it was a little longer, um, a little older than this one, and it, it was just about ready to, to just explode. And I said, so don't brush against it because it's just going to start going poof. And of course, she was 15. So she goes over and she stands in front of it and just goes like that. And it just like, <laughs> like that. It does, it looks like snow. That is evening primrose and that's a biennial. And so a biennial is an annual plant that has two different forms. So you see the mats in front here, those green things, those are next year's plants. So those, the others are the flowering stalks. And um, um, I'll tell you, it is so amusing to watch the birds. If you get a look at the flowering stalks, you can see that they're little seed capsules and they're like little cups. The birds will come and just eat right out of them. And uh, you'll, you'll get like little flocks coming in. It's, it's amazing. It's really fun to watch and to be around. Um, if for people that don't want anything quite that gangly, you can, um, once they have uh, flowered first, you can cut them and then they'll only get to be like that tall instead. And um, it works out well. Of course, this is also, the coyote bush is also an example of a dioecious plant. Uh, yes, it is a dioecious plant because it has the male and the female. Separate plants. Separate plants. Is there a benefit then? Should you strive to plant both? Um, it, it's, it's a choice. Um, we we choose to do this and people say, yes, but then don't you have them just coming up everywhere? And I'm like, 
actually we don't. And, and, uh, but that's, that's kind of what everybody's always afraid of. And the other thing is, is I've never heard anyone being allergic to it. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, that um, there's allergens that are uh, associated with, but I have not heard it with this. Are there, are there, is there any impact to having both in regards to um, the wildlife? With the bees and butterflies and everything, that, does it make any difference in how you're serving food? Um, well, I think, uh, like Colleen po pointed out, I think that, that the the, uh, the female is more, um, uh, yeah, flourishes more or something. I don't know. But uh, I, I tell you, I see them over so both. Many critters on both sides. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that one is really better than the other. Um, Yes, we, we like our coyote brush. The other thing is, is that the critters really like to have something that they can dive into. Yeah, it's, great it, it's great cover. I mean, critters need cover. And so just if anybody has, uh, knows uh, narrow leaf milkweed, I just want to point out that we don't know why this one is as tall as this is. Uh, again, it's the soil. If you're on riverfront property, you know, you got a pretty good shot at getting things that are really tall. Um, uh, but this has been amazing to watch. Um, then we have mugwort in, in um, California fuchsia in another um, uh, elderberry, more coyote brush. There's um, hummingbird sage down there. There was snowberry that I forgot to mention. There's more of the sticky monkey flower and Indian paintbrush. Oh, if you want a whiff of something, this was, uh, well, let's see, does it still smell? Oh, yes, it does. This is vinegar weed, which is a summer annual. And um, uh, in the wild, it gets to be this tall. If you give it water, it gets this tall. <laughs> but uh, if, if you like vinegar, just take a piece of it. It's really wonderful. And then we're going to walk really fast for a few minutes. Yes, yes. I naturalized a bunch of that behind the fence. We're going to we're going to play this like everybody wants to stop, and then they'll catch up. Okay, we're going out here. I want us to be able to do the cutting, so I want or uh, the division. So that's why I'm trying to get this. Doesn't it? <laughs> oh. I only drove a, drove a half an hour and I still appreciate walking. <laughs> so now this is a toy on that is uh, a true kiss, Christmas berry bush. If anybody wants a picture to take home, let me know and I'll take a picture of you in front of this gorgeous plant. That is a red bud, yes. I planted a red bud in June. Now, the thing is, is, why do you think this one has so many berries and that one doesn't? Um, so maybe the birds get, like that one better? There, there's birds living in there, oh, so okay. they, they get yeah. first dibs on the food there. Um, but also, um, uh, they, they um, soilborne is um, organic ag, um, and so they have fields right there. So if there is um, organic... Uh, fertilizer that's going into the water table they're they're going to be uh, getting getting some of it here um, but when I talked about grasses I said you could divide these really easily can you show us how to divide grasses I have really bad arthritis in my hands so I use my forearm to yeah that's pot. a great it's a great idea Make sure you show the camera what that looks like when you pull it out. Okay, so does everybody see what this looks like? It's a nice big root ball. And then who has my sharp shovel here? So if you want to work over this so it's not messy. 
and use that very sharp shovel. And I just divide it in yeah. half. Perfect. Yeah, keep it. Just keep it over there. Well, that's, I think that's good. Okay. Probably, yeah. Let me get you a couple pots. A lot of root, yeah. You know, those were seeds that I purchased from uh, from the CMPS, so they print those labels. So if anybody wants to take home one of these grasses, you're welcome to. They are, uh, you know, they, they turn a little dark in the winter, but you can see all that new growth there. Um, but if anybody wants to add that to their yard, they're welcome to take those home. I'm sorry? Um, it's salt grass. Disticus, disticulus piccata. I'll take one. Yeah. Welcome. Al forgot that they have those cookies on them. Oh, my God. That was on a slide. I had the danger zone. Oh, yeah. I do it every time. I swear I do like once a month. That one and the um, black walnuts will stay in your hands. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I did not know you that. You can actually, like, a natural dye. Really? That's one of the things they do for dye. Um, California poppy seeds. Um, but remember we talked about this when I said, you know, the... the the whole cultivar variety situation can be a little confusing. These are Carmine King. So they, the flowers are a little smaller than your typical poppy, and then they kind of have like a deeper orange-red color. They're super pretty. Um, but I, I, you can get, you can propagate this from seed. So you will get that same characteristic rather than it going back to the orange poppy, it will stay this color. Um, so let me give you, mm -hmm. and then another, another plant that I want you guys to practice taking cuttings. This is Atroplex lentiformis. It's a quail salt bush. It's actually really pretty, um, and it like loves the heat and really crappy soil conditions. Um, it's a great. We use this a lot in restoration, and it, it actually pulls salt out of the soil, which are very damaged soil. Um, from herbicides and pesticides makes our soil really salty, which is why you never want to be using miracle Grow and synthetic fertilizers. Um, but this is a restoration plant that pulls salt out of the soil. So you're welcome to take cuttings from this. Where should I leave these? I'll, I'll, I'll leave them right here. And then I wanted to show you, remember how I said use a hydrated plant? So this one I forgot to water, so there's no point in taking cuttings from a dehydrated plant, but this is the same lot of plants. And look at the difference between hydrated one versus the dehydrated one. Oh, yeah. Full sun? I uh, love full sun, yeah. Like. But, you know, the, the point is to just to practice the propagation. So, you know, don't worry about it. If it survives or not, it's the practice we need to get. Hibiscus latiocarpus occidentalis, coolest plant in the world. Okay, I, I feel like that has to be on video the way you just said that. <laughs> don't say things like, okay, ready? Go. What? Oh, hibiscus lacy. Oh, I can't say it now. Pressure. <laughs> Pressure. Guys, this is. um. This is uh, Asclepia fascicularis. This is your native uh, or, or your narrow leaf milkweed. And you can see that it's all gone. It's winter time, right? But I want to show you something really important. Those are live roots, right? So you can, this, you can keep them in pots and overwinter them like this. And in the spring, the roots will go crazy. And that's what, 
the root system looks like. So this whole pot will be filled with roots like this come spring. And you can see that's nice, healthy roots. You see the color. If you ever do the sniff test on your roots and they smell funky, you've got something funky going on in that plant. There's a fungus or, or uh, maybe it's gone anaerobic for some reason. Maybe it was sitting in too much water. So you can always tell plants are healthy from the smell and by the color. But so these are live roots. I'm going to leave this in here in spring. This will be a whole new plant. So my question is, I know I planted multiple seeds in here and they're multiple plants. So I think it would be a good test to cut that in half, split it up into two pots and see what happens. So that would be my thought is looking at this and looking at the way it grows and knowing that I put multiple seeds in there, I would think this could be divided. I don't know for a fact, but based on the different things that I divided, I would think that that might work. So if anybody's wanting to do that and take half of this home, Make sure you s spread the joy with somebody else. Um, you guys is what I use when I put stuff in the fridge. Um, I have a paper towel just like this, and I wet it, and I put it stack containers. Now, I don't recommend you go out and buy a whole bunch of these plastic things because I hate buying plastic, but I do such volumes of things that I have these, and I use them over and over. You don't have to use this. You could use a glass jar and peat moss. You can use a Ziploc baggie and paper towels. If you're just doing one or two things, just use something that's in your home. Don't go out and buy more plastic. But you know, when you're stacking 15 different types of species, you do need a more organized fashion. So that's why I use these. Um, but I just wet the paper towel, fold it over, and just wait for them to sprout. Okay, you guys, I have another thing to show you with the wild strawberries if you want to mosey over here when you get a chance. Um, and you do, you can pick up an apple. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so we all know that strawberries propagate by runners, right? And it's been a while since I've been propagating this one. I've been traveling a lot for, more, for work. But what I usually do is just have my nice decorative pot here. And then I'll take um, this and I will take a bobby pin or just like a metal wire or anything you've got laying around the house. And I'll pin it right there to hold it there. Do it again and do it again. So I'll have this weird kind of contraption of, of uh, yes, exactly. I have tested trying to cut it and just planting it. It didn't work. So you do need to keep the umbilical cord connected. Um, and, and really, it only takes about a week or two. It doesn't take long at all. But once, once you get a little bit of root system going there, then you can disconnect the umbilical cord. Um, and then you will see the roots come out of the bottom. Um, I don't have my glasses on. Do you see any roots there? Not yet. Not yet. They, they, come out pretty quick. They're probably slowing down a little bit because it's winter. So I have a question about wild strawberries. Yeah. They seem to me, just by looking at them, mm -hmm. and I bought them for this purpose, yeah. they seem very fire safe. Fire safe. Fire safe, meaning that, yeah, because I'm, I'm looking for something. Mm -hmm. I had to strip everything away from out Your around house, my yeah. propane tank. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, can I safely get away with putting wild strawberries around the propane? I don't, I don't know much about fire safety specifically. I mean, I know there's so much argument between this, um, but natives are supposed to be more fire safe yeah. Yeah. than not. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't look yeah. very much different than a regular strawberry plant, right? right. So, I don't know. This is um, not native, but I wanted to show you when we're talking about being scientists and exploring plants and figuring out how to propagate them. This is an uh, alpine strawberry that my sister grows in a hydroponic tower, and it does not produce the runners. Why? I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't researched the reason, but it's crazy to me. But I figured, how can I propagate it? So what I did is I tore out a chunk, and I noticed that very much like the strawberries, they have like little bunches. And this is like way rooted and overgrown. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I had to literally, oh, this that? morning, oh, I, she geez. doesn't even know I ripped it out of her <laughs> oh, container to show you guys this. But I would, take cut, uh, I would take a knife and cut out, make sure you get some of the roots. But no joke, I planted this in soil 
with not using this technique because yeah. this needs the umbilical cord. Yeah. This I planted in soil and I, and I got it to propagate. Wow. I was so excited. And these are edible and they're fantastic. If you haven't had them, they're a little yellow and they taste kind of like pineapple. Do they stay yellow? Yes. Oh. And they're fantastic. Are so they native too? To a part of health? They they're native? not native at all. Oh, I just oh. wanted to show you this from the scientific point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is growing food. We're growing food, yeah. which is okay. We want to grow food. Yes. So it's okay yeah. to plant these. But if you want to take some, look at how many I took from my sister. <laughs> She's going to kill me. Um, but just, I would cut, like you said, vertically. Make sure you're getting this nice chunk and get it into a little container of soil and She's not make food. Bite you. <laughs> She's so sick of me. <laughs> and the stuff that I, hey, we landscaped her whole front yard in natives. So, sure. so if you want to take some, you're welcome to have fun with this. Um, but very distinctly different from the strawberries. And I don't know why, but if someone wants to do the research and drop it into the folder, that would be really cool to figure out why the alpine strawberry does not propagate in the same way. Everybody says that natives don't need fertilizer, although all the nurseries put it in their pots, so I'm just going to say that. Um, but it's going to be a light fertilizer, but I wouldn't do it at this stage. Um, if you're going to put a worm casting, again, always, always, always please, if you can use organic fertilizer, use it. It's terrible to use synthetic fertilizer. It's terrible for our soils. It kills the microbiology within your soil. And then in addition to that, the factories are just, they're, they're dangerous, they pollute the environment. So just please, if you can, use worm castings, use something that's really light. If you're going to keep something in a pot for an eternity or that's its forever home, you are going to need to use some kind of fertilizer because ultimately they will pull everything out of the soil and then your plant will start doing badly in a pot. So if you ever wonder why your house plant looked great for two years and then you're like, huh, what happened to it? It's probably because it's run out of nutrients in the pot, so you do need to fertilize house plants. And for exactly the same reason, um, we fertilize the, um, the plants in the nursery always mm -hmm. because they are they are not in the soil; they're not able mm -hmm. to extract stuff from the environment, right. so they have to have right. fertilizer. So and, you, and it is so you, we only use organic things that. Yeah, so just think about it scientifically. If you're sitting in a pot, is it, does it have access to all the nutrients that it has if you had put it out into the garden? So think about it in terms of that, that time. And if it's going to be in a pot for an extended period of time, then it's going to need um, fertilizer. But always use something light and use something organic. Um, a lot of the soils that you're buying have fertilizer as part of what's in it. They, they, seem to make things more successful, especially with seeds. Um, so I would definitely, if there's one thing that you want to add to your collection, I would do a heat pad. And if you're really into this and you really want to do a lot more than just like what will fit one tray, you can buy ones that are like as big as this tabletop. And then you could have a folding table and put that mat down and have multiple things on there. So it's just whatever you're into or how much um, you're going to want to do. Um, but at this point, I wish I had bigger mats versus the smaller mats because I just am maxing out. I've got stuff all over my apartment, all over my patio. And I try different things inside. I try different things outside. Um, lots of people propagate with cuttings outside and they're just fine. Again, check three sources and see what other people are doing um, and then make your decision that way. I think for me, because I travel a lot, it's easier for me to keep it inside versus sometimes coming home and the plants are soaked from the rain or they dried out because you know someone wasn't monitoring them so I just feel for myself it's easier to monitor the moisture when they're inside um, but again that might change seasonally and just see what other people are doing with that particular species because some just like certain conditions better, better than others. Guys, like if you have a hydroponic store by your house, go check them out. They have some pretty cool stuff. I mean, you should just know everything that's near you. Everything that's near you and every nursery you go into, if they don't have natives, complain about it. And, and ask them for these things. They should have rooting hormone. They should have all the things that you want. But they don't know unless you ask for it, right? So these are, these are the things like you go and check and Check their shelves and see what they have and demand the things that you want. Does it expire? I'm not sure. Can someone check the back of one of the containers? Uh, right here, those are the old containers. 
Yeah, I would think. I wouldn't think. I just use aspirin. You use aspirin, oh, really? Yeah, it's, not, it's the same thing, but the little part. Wow. Child aspirin, I just smash it up. I might be saying the wrong medicine, but it's the same thing that if you look at the pills, it's the yeah. same thing. Acid, not getting right there. It's just willow bark. Oh, so it's aspirin, yeah. Oh, so I just, yeah, and and so no, I've heard from a, a permaculture expert that you can use willow to create yeah. this, but that I, I've also heard honey, and I've tried honey, and honey was not successful for me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anybody that's ever taken cutting of, uh, of, of willow, mm -hmm. willow, you can actually take a cutting and stick them in moist ground and they're going to grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, they are just loaded with, um, uh, with yeah. whatever you need yeah. to get that going. So I will, um, when I take uh, and move the willows in my pond around, I will uh, just put them in water and let them uh, root. Let, yeah. let, no, let them uh, Share with the water, and then I use ah, that. and then you use the water. I like it. So you know, as an environmental scientist, we do a lot of restoration, and we use willows. And it's literally, if you imagine just taking a branch off and using that as a cutting, and take all of the leaves off and just stick it into the ground. We put the rooting hormone on there, put it in the ground. In like six weeks, it's a tree. It's all the leaves are back. It's crazy. We do that with poplars as well. So. You know, plants are amazing, uh, but it, that doesn't surprise me about the willow, but it's, I mean, we use that quite a bit in restoration. Um, I did want to talk to you guys a little bit about mycorrhizae as well. I had a packet up here to show you. Hmm. Did anyone see a, oh, here we go. Okay, so this is mycorrhizae. Again, you can go into your nurseries and bug them and make sure that they're stocking this, but it's, uh, this, um, this fungi will uh, develop a symbiotic relationship with the roots for the plant and make the plant healthier. Um, and you just put a couple crystals in there. A lot of soils have this already included in it, so you don't need to do this if your soil already has it. But if you want to take a look at what it is, and you're welcome to take a little bit of it if you want to play with it. Or So we drop a pouch about half this size into every hole for every tree we do for, um, for restoration. Um, so we'll just drop that, put the pole right on top of it, put some good soil in there, and call it a day. Evolving my garden more towards natives, it's hard to adjust what you've been told your whole life is aesthetically pleasing. Right. And I wasn't finding any literature that really addresses We, we that. have to get used to things looking a little one, more messy. Exactly. Our aesthetic. Yeah. It's out of print, though. And I, I don't remember the name of it. I'll have to email it to you. Um, but it's all about the design with native plants. Mm -hmm. And it is gorgeous. And it's the only publication I've ever found that, that did that. If you haven't read this, oh, this is so inspiring. I actually have a, had a customer buy that for me because I, so I, I actually transported plants from Southern California. They were native plants or Northern California plants we were growing in Southern California, but I got them transported to Northern California for her, and she bought me that book as a thank you. I'm like, that's so cool. I'm like, I just wanted her to get her plants. And if you want to read about seeds, this thing is fascinating. And if you have not written on my chalkboard around the corner by the butterfly, please do so. Sorry.